So I get a lot of people asking me um, what, the, what they can do to get their horses to pick up their hooves a bit better and stand a little bit better for their trimmer or their farrier. And unfortunately, there usually isn't just one thing. So I wanted to go over what kind of step one is for me with my own horses. And I thought the first one I'd show this on is my new horse, Shine, because um, Shine has the least amount of experience with this. And so I thought she'd be a good example because I'm, I'm actually kind of hoping that she'll do it wrong a few times so I can explain like what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, when I'm doing it, um, so that you don't just see how it looks uh, when it's done perfectly because then you won't be able to problem solve with your own horses. So I thought I'd just start with her and I want to show some of her uh, reactiveness around her face and her neck so that you can see what she does and what we're trying to improve. Of course, she's being lovely right now. So, <laughs> But uh, what I first noticed with her when I was working with her initially is that she doesn't like her head touched up here. See how her head keeps elevating? The more I rub her forehead and get close to her ears and close to her pole, she doesn't really like that. So I've modified how I normally do things with her to stay kind of within her comfort zone. But if I rub her down here, see how her head does not go up higher at all? It stays down low and sometimes she'll lower her head even more so. So it's just a few behaviors that are specific to her. There, she's starting to lower her head. So I didn't want to like attack this area. See it? Even with my hand not even touching her, she raised her head. So she's just uncomfortable with this area of her body being touched and handled. And as we continue to build trust and build our relationship, I'll start touching her here and handling her here more and more. But until we've reached that level in our relationship, I'm going to work within the level of her own personal comfort zone. So Everything that she's showing me too, that behavior, that, that head going up like that, okay? That is concern. That's telling me she's a little bit stressed. I'm gonna back her up a little bit so we're for sure in the camera. But it, she's showing me a low level of concern and stress. And to have a horse that's good to have their feet done, you need them to be able to stand still without holding on to a level of concern and stress. So all the things I tell people to do with their horses to improve how well they stand for hoof care, will have to do usually with helping the horse learn to lower that level of concern and stress. I'm gonna scratch her here. See how that brings her focus back to me? She wanted to look at something over there and instead of pulling her head over this way, I'm just gonna do something on this side of her body that brings her focus back to me. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this with the halter on first and then I'm gonna take the halter off and show everybody how I do it both ways, okay? So with her, I've created a pre-cue for her to lower her head. She's a pretty tall horse, she's around 16 hands. So I try to think about this in ways too where like if somebody's short, asked her to lower her head um, where could they possibly touch if her head was already high, which it tends to be, okay? So a horse that is super stressed will not lower their head. So how easily they lower their head and respond to the cue you've given them will also kind of give you a barometer uh, for how they're feeling in that moment on that day and kind of help me formulate a good starting point in my head as to what we're going to work on together. Okay, so the first place that I like to touch on the horse to teach this, this head down, which isn't, it's not a trick, right? They won't do it unless they're relaxed. So yeah, I'm asking the horse to do something specific with its body, but they won't be able to do it if they aren't relaxed enough to do it, if that makes sense. So the first place I like to touch is here on the wither, okay? Because that is the lowest point of the front of the horse. And with her, what I initially did was get her comfortable with this. 
And then, oh, she's gonna do it anyway. So see how she lowered her head? <laughs> that would be step two, but um, she's getting pretty good at this. Normally they won't do that, and you have to get your hand all the way up here before they'll drop their head. So I, never mind. I guess she's learned this a lot faster than <laughs> than I was thinking. Okay, so but first step is here to touch, and see how she brings her head toward me. And I'll wait till she lowers it a little bit, and then I'm gonna let go. And I'm not pressing hard. I'm pressing very softly with my hand. Well, not even pressing. Kind of just resting my hand on her neck right there. So I'm not forcibly making her do anything. It's just a cue that I would like her to lower her head, okay? So with most horses, when you're teaching this, you would start here, and then you'll slowly run your hand up their neck, and as soon as they bring their head towards you and put it down, you would release your hand. Oh, sweet thing. <laughs> so she used to not like me uh, touching her pole you know, in that area around her ears, like she still doesn't really enjoy it. Like she doesn't like being groomed there. It's just something specific to her that she doesn't enjoy. So I will generally put my hand here and wait. She lowers it and brings it toward me. And I'll note the speed of which she's doing that, right? If it takes her a long time, like if I put my hand here and it takes her like 30 seconds to bring her head toward me and lower it, be like, okay, she's holding a little bit of tension there. And I need to be aware of that and take note of it and work with my horse as she is in the moment on that day. And you will be surprised how many horses you walk up to and you can't even get them to focus on you when you do this, let alone lower their head. So it's just something to think about and consider because your first interaction with your horse will set the tone for the rest of the time you're spending with them that day. So I like to start off on as good a foot as possible if I can. And I forget who said it, but somebody said that horses like a slow hello. And I think that's the perfect way to explain it, right? If you walk up to a horse with a lot of energy and with the intention of putting the halter on, taking them to, you know, to tie up and grooming them and saddling them and riding them, they're gonna feel all that intention in the way you approach them, right? So like, hopefully she'll respond. Like if I approach her like, okay, we're gonna go do something. See how all of a sudden she's like, oh, that's a scary amount of energy. I don't know what she wants me to do. I'm gonna back away from that person cause she seems kind of unbalanced, okay? So now if I go here, See how it, it's taking her longer? There, she puts her head down a little bit, there. But it took her a few seconds longer than it did when I was just standing next to her, relaxed, okay? And see now she's raised it, not because she's, she's unsure of what we're gonna do, but she's ready for whatever I'm gonna ask her to do next. So sometimes head in the air is not a bad thing. Sometimes it's, that the horse is in a state of readiness to do whatever you may ask them to do next. But when I'm just standing here relaxed as they should be for their trims, uh, I would like for their head to be down and for them to be calm. So now I think I'm gonna show you what I do. Good girl. What I do um, when I go to catch them, we'll do a mock simulation of me catching this horse. Okay, so her head went up a bit. She's watching my dogs in the background. So I ask her to lower her head a bit more and relax a little bit more, okay, before I take this halter off. Because if I take this halter off while her head is up high in the air, I'm kind of giving her a reward for being stressed and anxious. And we're trying to do the opposite of that with this exercise. So I'm gonna start here, bring my hand here. Okay, head went up though, so I'm gonna wait. Head went down. Now I'm gonna take the halter off, okay? And when you take a halter off, take it off softly and like we're not done, okay? So after I take the halter off, I want the horse to lower their head even after it's been removed because I don't want the horse to think that when the halter comes off that they can just run off immediately. 
I want them to still be connected to me. Like this is just a tool, all right? It's not like some leash I drag the horse around with. It's a tool I use to help gain connection and understanding with my horse, all right? So that connection doesn't end whether the halter's on or not. So if she's focused on something over there, I'm gonna put my hand here and I'm gonna slowly run my hand up here and I'm just gonna wait. I'm not gonna put any more pressure on, okay? She's distracted and that's okay. She's a horse, she's a prey animal. She's looking at what the neighbors are doing and she's kind of gauging in her head whether or not she may have to leave. There, she's come back to me. I take my hand off, okay? Her eyes getting softer again, she's blinking. I'm gonna ask for a little bit more. My hand's on her wither. I'm gonna run my hand up her neck, head goes down. We're connected again. So, a lot of horses that don't stand well for the farrier, it's not really that they're not good at picking up their feet or have a lack of understanding with what we're asking them to do. It's that they're actually too tense to do those things. Okay, so doing more of the same is not going to improve how well they stand for your hoof care provider, okay? If anything, it might make it worse because it's just gonna build on that level of anxiety and make it bigger and bigger until they can't handle it anymore. So when I go to catch her, okay, and I'm gonna walk up to her, when I look at a horse, well, she's not gonna let me because she wants to hang out with me. <laughs> let me see if I can push her back a little bit. And we'll see. So you can see how I approach her. So when I approach her, I'm not gonna stare at her in the face, okay? I'm gonna walk up to her, to her shoulder, because this is the place to politely address the horse. And you can see her head went up, okay? That's a good barometer for this horse that tells me how concerned she is or isn't. All right, then I'm gonna put my hand on her with her. All right, and if she doesn't lower her head from just my hand being there, I'm gonna bring it up to her pole. She lowers her head and brings it toward me. And now I can put the halter on, okay? And when you put the halter on, well, this will be a good, let me see if I can get her head to come back down again. We've got a neighbor that's moving cars around next door. Good girl, which I mean, it's a good distraction, right? Let's us work on these things. So her head comes down. Do not put a halter on like this. Watch what happens. Where does her head go, right? Go straight up in the air. And that's the opposite of what we're trying to achieve with this exercise. I just made her more tense, even though when people are doing that, they're not meaning to create concern in their horse. And I've also taught her to put her head up in the air. And on tall horses, that makes it really difficult to put a halter on them. So hand comes here, hand comes up to her pole, head goes down, reach over the neck, okay? I'm gonna hand myself this side of the halter. And now I'm gonna lift it over her nose and then tie it. Okay? And see, when I'm close to her pole again and her ears, her head's gonna go up a little. So even after I've put the halter on, hand comes here on the wither, slides up to the pole, and I wanna make sure that she's still relaxed and connected with me. Okay, if I wanted a little bit more, oh, she's gonna have a look and a chew, so I'm not gonna ask her to do anything while she's processing. Very nice. But the only thing I was gonna say if I was being really picky that I would like to see her have done in that moment is give, oh, we're gonna get a lot of releases. I just would have liked that inside ear to kind of shifted toward me to let me know that I had her focus, but she was soft, her head went down, her eye was relaxed, so that's okay. I probably had her secondary attention, just not her primary attention. So we'll see if she gives me her primary this time. Hand goes here on her wither, rolls up her neck to her pole. Now she's just in a zone. So this is good though. This, this is what I was hoping she would do. I was hoping she would do it wrong. Okay, and this is a small, small thing, 
that I was doing. So there she's lowering and getting soft and I got that ear. Um, this is something I learned recently from um, Leslie Desmond that if you are holding your arms like this or holding your arms on your hips, okay, you will not breathe deeply into your diaphragm. It's something that's really hard to do when your arms are in this position. And if you're not breathing deep into your diaphragm, you are not breathing deep enough to relax. So if I put my hands here and take a deep breath, see how that brought that ear to me? They're such sensitive animals. And now she's gonna bring her head a little bit toward me. And I haven't asked her to do anything. All I did myself was find a deeper level of relaxation, okay? So this is a starting point with your horse, okay? This is one of the very beginning things you can do to help create a connection, build your relationship, and help the horse be more relaxed when you are around it. All right, and it's something this simple. It's kind of like, um, very good. That's what she started doing, is when I put my hand here, head goes down and comes in toward me. I haven't even had to really run my hand up to her pole usually, which I think she really likes, right? Because she doesn't like that area touch. But if I went straight here, she was really concerned with that. And see, now she's going the opposite there. Uh, so you don't, you don't have to find those tough spots in your horse and just try to hammer them to death until they submit. You know, it would have taken me a lot longer and I think I would have lost a lot of trust if I had just come here and pressed on her head or pulled on this line until she started lowering her head, right? Because it's not that she doesn't know what I'm asking to, her to do, it's that she's concerned about what I'm asking her to do. So it's really important for me to notice that concern and respond in a way that lets her know that I see what she's trying to tell me, okay? So starting here, there we go. That was beautiful. I didn't even have to run my hand up her neck and she appreciates that. She's like, no, I can do the thing you're asking me to do, right? Horses are born being able to do all the things we would ever want them to do. We just have to put direction and timing to it. And that will be different based on the individual temperament and sensitivity level and concern level of a specific horse. So, yeah, step one of standing for the farrier. Okay, this will also become a cue for relaxation when you're riding. I also use it as a cue that I'm going to get off. So it does a number of things. It's something I use a lot touching this wither area. So she's focused on the neighbor. I shift my weight, she comes back to me. They're so sensitive, okay? Head goes down, I want a little bit more. Very good, oh good, I got that ear and I got that head, that was beautiful. Okay, simple as that. I mean, not simple as that. It's taken months to get this. <laughs> so, there's a lot of hard work that's gone on for the little things, you know, but then they get much better with everything, right? If they can carry a lower level of concern when you're working with them, everything gets better. Not just haltering, not just leading, okay? all the things get better because that mindset will start to carry over to everything else. All right, I think that's it with Shine. So this is my horse, Conway, and I wanted to show just uh, the head down with a horse that's a little bit more relaxed um, than Shine. He is not as responsive though, but I've had him since he was about a month old. So he's been doing this stuff for a long time and he doesn't get too concerned about much. But if I want him to bring his head down, he's very, very malleable. He just kind of, he already has his head down, so he probably doesn't see much of a purpose in doing this. <laughs> I'll take his halter off and see if he'll want to put his head down a little bit more. He's a little bit upset because his buddies are over there eating. I just put hay out. And I think he thinks he should be over there having hay with them. But as you can see, he's not really too stressed about much of anything. So 
I still do it though. I feel like it's still a good starting point to kind of gauge where your horse is and to get them kind of soft and responsive. So my hand comes up here and I do it a little bit differently with him because he's not concerned about his pull. So you can see that the signal for him is more right here behind his ears because see how he's not concerned about me touching his ears, touching his forehead. It just doesn't bother him. Not like Shine, who if I rubbed here or tried to touch her ears, like her head would be sky high. So I have him pretty desensitized to all these things. And he doesn't get to that high level of stress, so he carries his head quite low. But even so, if I want to go to halter him, I'm going to ask him to bring his head down and toward me. And there's no pressure there. It's just touching. Once again, don't. Don't put your halter on like this, okay? It's just gonna make their head go up. When you go to put your halter on, hold both pieces in this left hand, okay? Bring your right arm over, hand that piece to your right hand, and then wrap that halter around his nose and shimmy, the, shimmy it up until it's at the right spot, okay? And then I'm gonna tie it. Okay, and when I'm all said and done, after I've haltered him, I'm going to ask him to lower his head one more time because I want him to be with me and focused on me. So the level of difficulty your, has, your horse has with doing this exercise is kind of a good way to measure how stressed they are and their level of understanding when it comes to giving to pressure. Not that this is pressure, right? This is just touch. This is just him responding to my touch. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on him, okay? So I'm not pushing on his head. See what happens when I push on his head? His head goes up. So I'm not doing that with him, okay? Putting my hand here by his withers, bringing it up here to his pole, holding his nose and using touch and release of touch until he lowers his head, okay? If he is stressed, he will not do this. He will not lower his head. He'll want to have his head high up in the air because as a prey animal, he wants to protect his eyes, okay? So if a horse can't do something as simple as this, they're probably going to have a difficult time picking up their hooves and holding them up for two plus minutes for the farrier. So this is a great starting point. This is the number one place that I really start with a lot of the horses that I work with. Okay, it sets the tone. Have a slow hello. Okay, this is a slow hello. Been talking for how many minutes? I don't know, at least five. Okay, and most people when they walk up to go get their horses, it'd take them what, 30 seconds? That is a short hello, and horses don't respond super well to that. So take the time it takes to establish a level of trust and understanding with your horse, okay? So I think that's about it. We had two good examples of this exercise of a horse that uh, is kind of calm and relaxed like Conway is here. I don't think his head has moved above his withers this, the entire time we've been filming this except of course right now, <laughs> that's ironic. And then with Shine, the other horse that's in this video, we saw that her head was up high for most of that time, right? Until I got her a bit more relaxed. This is important too, this is just as a side note, okay? <laughs> Stop preemptively showing what I'm going to talk about. Um, I was just saying, so it, when your horse's head is down this low, don't lean over like this, okay? If the horse decides to raise its head up suddenly, it's, it's gonna knock you right in the chin and they're so strong, it could break your neck doing that. Oh, I got a horse. <laughs> She's investigating the camera, so we're gonna cut this off. But that's my advice for the step, the first step to take when preparing your horse for the farrier. And it has nothing to do with picking up their hooves and everything to do with that at the same time. Okay, thanks for watching.